Hi and welcome to this Blueberry Markets video update with me John Kibler, Head Currency Analyst. In this video I'll be taking you through the week ahead analysis. We're going to highlight the news for this week and some strength meter stuff as well as some charts of interest. So let's dive straight in into the news. Got some interesting data coming up this week. We have some central bank data um, that's from the RBNZ. We have a rate decision, which is looking like we're going to see a 50 basis points jump here for the RBNZ. Last time we saw a rate hike uh, from the RBNZ, um, we did get a little bit of downside in the Kiwi, but Kiwi is actually looking fairly strong at the moment, um, as well as the Aussie uh, dollar. And we do have some monetary policy meeting minutes uh, for Aussie as well. Uh, I'm just not too focused on these currencies at the moment uh, from a strength meter point of view. It just hasn't been a, a, an interesting market to trade for me personally. Um, but there, there's some good opportunities around. I do quite like Kiwi at the moment, um, especially against weakening currencies. Uh, if you were trading Euro Kiwi for the past sort of uh, month or so, you would have done really well because Euro has been on the decline, Kiwi has been on the up. Um, so you know, good chart to trade there. Uh, we then have uh, the press conference following that. Um, but then we also have some big data towards the end of the week, or sorry, middle of the week. Uh, on Wednesday, we have US core retail sales. So had all our CPI data last week out of the US. Now we've got retail sales coming up. We've got FOMC meeting minutes as well. Is the FOMC meeting minutes going to reveal uh, the plans for the Fed in terms of are they now just settled on a 50 basis points hike in the next meeting um, coming up? So interesting to see retail sales forecasted to come in much lower as well. Is that going to show that demand in the economy starting to slow as well? That would be some, something that's uh, of great interest to us. Going on to the strength meter then, so uh, really interesting markets at the moment in terms of where some currencies are pr uh, kind of put on the uh, strength meter. We've got the yen as the strongest currency, but we know that we've been seeing a little bit of weakness in that market uh, in the short term. So it be interesting to see if that can start coming and, and reversing from these high levels. We also have a dollar and euro in very similar places. Dollar dropped quite considerably last week. We saw that from the CPI data, but we did see it start to gain a little bit. So it'd be interesting to see if the dollar could also reverse from this area. Euro, I think, is going to have a little bit more of a long-standing weakness. So I'm I'm not too concerned about the euro starting to bounce too aggressively. I think if you're still looking to uh, short particular markets, euro it should be one that's that's on your watch list at least. Um, but yeah. Yen in a reversal zone as well as the dollar and the euro. But dollar yen could be something to watch out for. Going on to euro, US dollar then. Like I said, I think euro downside is still the, the play of the market. Although monthly time frames are suggesting that we would get a slight reversal. We had the CPI data last week. Price you know, has now sort of filled that gap which was the CPI data in uh, in here. Um, so we, we filled that gap now. Are we going to see continuations uh, to the downside? Now what's interesting about Euro US dollar this week um, is that we've broken this low here on the four hour time frame and we're going to open up within value. So uh, typically when a market does this we can see actually trade between value areas so it'd be interesting to see how the market does shape up we are a bit closer to the value area low which is around about the 102185 area for me um so it'd be interesting to see here maybe if you know if price tries to the upside let's say it retests the daily value area high and rejects it we could look for opportunities to trade through and down to the value area low before seeing a bit of a bounce down here. But we are quite close to this area. You know, maybe we reject the point of control, break the break the lows and move down. Something like that I'm expecting maybe going into this week or maybe even just ahead of the core retail sales. Because if we get to, to here uh, by core retail sales and we get a negative number, the dollar might weaken again and you know we've got this kind of point of control that's untested down here from the daily so that could be something to to consider going into this week 
dollar yen then so if we actually look at it from a weekly perspective um we can see that there's actually been a gap on the weekly chart as well so you've got 134.38 between uh, and 133.89 is the the sort of gap to fill so i was looking at the daily and i was looking to see how price may may sort of do that so i think if we break the 133.89 and price trades through that level we could look for ideas to trade to the other side so 134 38 would be first targets and then you've got kind of point of control at 135 and then value area high above that which is 135.52 so definitely some scope to move higher higher here especially if the strength meter reversal play starts to starts to come out in the market we've got obviously the dollar on one side and then the yen on the other so we could be uh, looking at that as a potential set up for a bit of a reversal move um, and if the dollar gets stronger and the yen gets weaker then i do expect maybe a move towards this sort of area in here if however on the downside let's just say the downside risk dollar weakens um, then we could see a break of this weekly value area low if we trade out of that area we could see price continue to the downside but you know weekly value area low could be a bit of an interesting area as well for reversal so just keep that in mind i do think the yen could be reversed and we've seen it against lots of currencies so you know i'm expecting maybe a bit more yen downside and that's why I featured Kiwi Yen as well, because Kiwi Yen's approaching a major level of resistance between sort of 86.40, 86.80 on the weekly chart. Those are the areas I'm really interested in at the moment. And we're, we're quite a way away from last week's value area, which is all down through here. So, yeah, this could be quite an interesting market to watch. I think if we do start to get some, some downside, I think it'll only be if price shoots to the upside first and maybe fills this little bit of area of resistance um other than that we could stall a little bit but you know kiwis on the up yen at the reversal zone if we do see that yen weakness could we look to potentially trade a little bit higher here you've got this 86 area here which is a high volume node on the weekly as well as friday's point of control so could price sort of reject this area here and could we see a move up to 86.40 for like a, a 40 pip or so move there that could be something to interest if price trades below these lows here you know that could be a move back to the downside and we could be heading towards this high volume node or even the weekly value area high but i think that depends on how the yen acts this week Going on to gold then, so gold's quite interesting, gold's still on the up, um, we did talk about the potential for gold to start to flip slightly, um, just because price has been sort of um, rejecting these recent lows uh, through here, um, however it does look likely now that price is going to continue to the upside i think this is all going to depend again on sort of the dollar situation now, um, poor data for the dollar basically suggests that the fed won't hike aggressively which also means uh, gold will probably trade uh, a little bit uh, lower i would assume uh, because there's less risk there in the market so usually you would see gold trade a little bit lower so maybe this move that we're seeing is a little bit of a false move but we'll, we'll wait and see what actually happens here i think if we break above 1806 then we do have a weekly untested point of control at 1816 so which is this area just through there that could be something that price may want to target before seeing any kind of downside um but you've got a really tight trading area here between sort of the weekly value area high and the weekly value area low. If we trade within that area, we could possibly trade to the other side of value. I just think that um, it is, yeah, this is going to really depend on the risk sentiment in the market. At the moment, obviously, gold trending higher as well. You've got markets making higher highs and higher lows. We are stalling a little bit with the higher highs. They're not as aggressive, um, obviously, as these previous ones. So is this an area where there's been some profit taken in the market? So I do feel if we do shoot this 1806 high, 1816 is going to be the sort of area that I that I keep an eye on. And I think if we can reject that area, that could be where some selling pressure comes into the market. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope you learned a lot. If you did, leave this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, for some more Forex trading content and I'll speak to you in the next video.